Hello Yellow Nation! So today's tutorial is about how to make a V-neck overlapping top. Now the special thing about this overlapping top is that one side is splitted and then we are using the slash and spread to achieve this splits. I know it's not that obvious because of the color and texture of the clothes but let's just get into it and you'll see what I mean. So the first thing that we want to do now is because it's a V-neck and it's an overlap kind of um, of top we are going to have to like create extra space for the overlap now for the extra space for the overlap i'm going to add extra four inches so i'm going to add extra four inches right here oh my marker is killing me so let me use my pencil i hope it's still clear i don't have any more good markers so i left extra four inches space here and this would be my new center line instead of using this as my center line extra four inches is needed for that extra overlap uh, that you need you can make the overlap longer or wider if that is what you want but i think four inches is a nice standard for a like regular or nice overlap for your overlapping top now after giving the extra four inches i can now then go to the top and have my usual standard three inches at the top and then extra five inches for my shoulder slope this is five inches right here and this is three inches right here now from my five inch uh here i'm going to go down by one inch and then draw my shoulder slant so this is my shoulder slant right here now after drawing my shoulder slant i'm going to then check out the shoulder of the client the shoulder of the client is 15 inches now since from here to here is three so half of 15 inches is 7.5 15 that's the 15 divided by 2 is 7.5 so i have 3 here and 7.5 minus the 3 that i have here will make it 4.5 so i'm just going to take my 4.5 that is the actual shoulder slope of the client so i'm just going to mark it on this my slanted line that i put right here now from here and I'm, I'm then going to take the arm old depth now because i'm making a sleeveless dress Normally, for the arm hole depth, I'm going to use my shoulder divided by 2, which is 7.5, then add extra 0.5. So, on a regular basis, the shoulder depth is supposed to be 8 inches based on the length of the shoulder. But because this is a sleeveless dress, you can actually leave it at 7.5 or even subtract extra 0.5 inches from it. And that's what I'm going to do. So, I'm going to make my depth 7 inches because I want it to be snug, you know, around the arm hole of my client. So that is the reason why I am making it, you know, that length. So I'm going to then draw a straight line all the way down here. And then I'm going to extend my chest line. So this line right here will be my chest line. So this is my chest line right here. Now, the next thing that I need to take is my waistline and then the nipple to nipple, the bust span. Now the bust span for my client, that is from one nipple to the other nipple, that is what you have to measure to know the bust span. The bust span for my client, 3.75 should work or 3.5 should work. So I'm just going to use 3.625, like a nice balance between both of them. And I'm going to mark that. I'm going to mark 3.625 here also as my nipple to nipple. And then I'm going to then draw a straight line up. So this is my nipple to nipple. Now, the next thing that I need to take is my um, bust point. That is from the shoulder to the bust. From shoulder to bust, for is 11. Now, look at where I'm going to take this measurement from. I'm taking it from this point. I'm not taking it from here. I'm not taking it from here. I'm taking it from this point. Where my, sh my bust line meets my shoulder line. Like, it makes so much sense to actually take it from here and not from any other place. Or else you will get the wrong position of your bust point. So, the bust point for this client is 11 inches. So, I'm going to take it from here and then measure 11 inches here. So, maybe I should lift it up a little bit and make it about 10.5 just to give her a little bit of lift there. I'm gonna make it 10.5 instead of 11. And you can also leave it at 11, it depends on what you want, but I'm going to put it at uh, 10.5 for her. Then the next thing I'm going to take is my shoulder to waist. The shoulder to waist is 15.5. I don't have enough for that. I'm just gonna stop at 15 and then add extra 0 0.5 because. So let's just, let's just assume that this length is 15.5. But I'm going to put it here, add extra 0 0.5 inches because my paper length is not to it i was trying to manage paper and this is what happens when you try to manage paper and I, I, i'm just oh, it's the ordinary 0 0.5 that is missing ordinary 0 0.5 that is missing now but you know things we give things all right so after that 
now the reason why i am not taking the under bust right now is because of the style that i'm going for the style that i'm going for is a simple crisscross you know crisscross neckline now if it was not a crisscross neckline if it was going to be fitted to the under bust then i would have taken the under bust measurement and done some contouring there but because this is a basic basic top or basic uh, pattern then we don't need to curve the under bust area now let us go to our bust allocation now our bust is 37 sorry 35.75 this is the bust right here now for a regular person the front bust or the the circumference of the, your front is bigger than the circumference of your back why because we have two oranges in the front of our chest so of course the circumference in the front is going to be bigger so that is why we are not going to share this equally front and back we are going to give more to the front and take a little bit from the back when we want to put in our bust circumference for the front and for the back now we have 35.75 i'm going to divide that into two now this divided into two is going to give us one seven point seventeen to eight two five so we have 17.825 as if we are going to split it equally between front and back we have 17.85 now we're going to give the front extra one inch that will be 18.825 and we're going to take away one inch from the back that will be 16.825 so this is front bust and this is back bust okay so now because this is 18.825 for the entire front we're then going to split this into two because we are creating a half pattern we're not creating a full pattern this is half pattern so this is going to be divided into two so we have 9.4125 as our front circumference so i'm going to measure 9.4125 i cannot really get exactly where it is but i'm just trying to like eyeball it on my chest line this is my chest line and sorry this is my bust point not my chest line so i'm just sort of like eyeball it and then just mark this as my line and then i'm going to take this and then draw a straight line from the chest to the bust to the waist okay so this straight line is affecting everything as you can see it's affecting both the waist and the bust the bust this is the correct measurement but the waist measurement is smaller the waist measurement is 31 inches so me giving all this excess here will make the waist too big now because i wanted this line to be straight i am going to have to remove a dart here i'm going to have to remove a dart around here to complement this straight line that i have here now regularly if i was going to just go with my bust line without any dart i have 31 31 divided by 4 is going to give me 7.75 this is 7.75 right here okay so if i was going to do a regular slant line it's going to look like this and this is too slanty it's too slanty so because of the slantiness of the slant i'm going to take away this excess that is here look at the excess the amount of excess that is here i'm going to take that away and put it here instead so i can maintain my straight line right here if you have any question at this point please let me know in the comment section and i'll clarify as much as i can clarify so i'm going to measure the excess that i have here the excess i have here is about 1.5 1.5 there about so i'm then going to take that 1.5 and remove it here 1.5 split into two on either side of my bust line this is my bust line here so i'm going to split 1.5 into two on either side so the total will be 1.5 so that'll be 0 0.75 here and 0 0.75 here so 0 0.75 on either side and i have this okay so i have this now this is my bust line let me draw my bust line right here and label it so this is my bust this is my waist bust and this is waist right here okay so this is my bust line this is my waistline now what i'm going to do is to take my that from 0 0.5 inches from my bust which should be around here this is 0 0.5 inches for my bust and then i'm going to draw my darts okay so now i have my darts this is the simple dart that is going to be here this dart here is equal to this excess that is here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to retain my regular straight line because i have accounted for all of the excess by adding my darts okay okay if you are understanding me please say uh -huh, uh -huh. so now that i have this now that i have this now the next thing now the next thing or the next uh, step to do is to introduce our bust dart 
boss that is always important even if you don't contour the under boss just make sure you always contour this boss that so that it will bring out the shape of your client or of your own bust area you want that boss to stand well you want it to be comfy you want it to be all right you understand see anyways so for my boss that so the thing is this i measured the shoulder to waist for my client's back and i measured the shoulder to waist for her front and the difference between the front shoulder to waist and the back shoulder to waist is just 0.5 that is very small right that, but that's because my client is not busty like she doesn't have like you know you know big you know bust so because she doesn't have big bust that's why the dif difference is just 0 0.5 now i'm then going to just take that tiny 0 0.5 and split it into two 0 0.5 split it into two is going to be 0 0.25 and 0 0.25 like it is oh what am i doing 0.25 i mean like the distance is very small it's very minute it doesn't do much this is it right here and then i'm gonna take it to 0.5 from the bus and then do this again so my boss that here is almost negligible even if i don't have boss that it might not even do anything but just so it will have a perfect fitting on my client i'm going to take it out anyways so this is my boss that of just 0.5 like for my own boss that the distance the, the difference was like uh about two inches the difference between the front and back is like two inches so i took like one one if it's for my own boss because i have more boss than this client okay i hope you understand like the reason why this boss is the boss that is very small compared to some boss that's that we might have worked with in the past okay so now we have done the lower part now let us talk about the arm o now for the front of your ham hole what you are going to do is to measure this entire length we have seven divide it into two we have 3.5 you can go down by one inch right here and then from this one inch that you went down by you go in by between 0 0.75 to one inches i'm just going to go in by 0 0.75 because this is a sleeveless dress and i don't want it to go in too much so you're just going to go in just a little bit by 0 0.75 0 0.75 is a nice standard for whatever arm hole that you want to draw as long as it's for the front 0 0.75 0 .75 is a nice standard so i'm going to take it from this point here this is my shoulder slope from my shoulder slope point here to meet this one and then to meet my bust okay so we have this this and uh, this okay if you have this curve ruler that is good if you don't have the curve ruler everything is fine you can always use your hand to trace it before i got the curve ruler i always used to use my hand to trace it and you know i don't know how to draw curves like that but i tried my best and you know it didn't look too bad then but now that i have cover lights i'm grateful for cover lights i'm not gonna lie i'm very grateful for cover lights so anyway you see the way the cover lights set it oh it's so beautiful this pattern it's nice right i think it's nice <laughs> so let's go to the part that is on familiar territory that is the part that we don't really talk about or i haven't really talked about at all in this on this channel everything else i have talked about i'm going to drop cards i'm going to drop end screens for you to see um, a little bit more about pattern making of a standard uh, pattern this is more standard but this part that we're going to now is unfamiliar territory because now we want to create the crisscross neckline and then we are going to also slash and spread to create our you know crease at the top now for this part i'm then going to check how wide i want the neckline to be now for my client i don't want the neckline to be too wide she's she's a very conservative person so four inches wide is good so i'm going to just take four inches so i, I took it like this and along this line not on this straight line see this is how i took my four inches like this and then like this because that is the shape that's the shape of the neckline that we're going for you know or whatever so now this is my four inch here now i'm going to go to the center front how low do you want this v-neck to be that is how much chest do you want to show you can go as low as eight nine you can go as low as ten you can even go as low as whatever it is that you want to go as low as but uh, i think a good six might be might be good enough a good six might be good enough so i'm just going to do six and then see where that will take us um using my slants my slants is preparing we go lower than six let me see where my slant is preparing we go lower than we can do it like this we have this but let me mark it and see how low it is that is giving us about 7.5 inches and i'm not sure my client is going to be fine with that so i'm going to take my curve ruler my curve ruler um does better so i'm going to just take my curve ruler and mark this is the four inch mark right here this is the upper mark that i want the six inches that i want and this is the bottom of my uh, pattern and then i can just go like this and then i eat all my points and i still have a good a good slant you see that right here 
so if you use a stretch ruler it's going to make you want to go lower than this so for my sisters that don't like to show um cleavage anytime they make a crisscross neckline this is a good ruler for you to use because the straight part will make the slant go lower as you can see when i try to connect my slant it to get to the lower part it puts me it puts my slant here and that will make my chest to open by extra 1.5 inches than i wanted but when i use the curve ruler it gave me my nice curve from top to bottom now the next thing that we want to do is to measure this length from here to here is 9.125 so i'm going to measure my curve and make sure that my curve also stops at 9.125 right here this is another mistake that we make by not removing this excess that's why your v-neck might be um, extending downward or looking funny when it's not supposed to be funny because this place is longer than the rest of the body so you have to make sure that this slant or this line right here is the same length as the rest of your uh, pattern so let me show you again what i did this is where my neckline stops right this is the intersection right here and then i just measure the length it is 9.1 so i take my ruler and my tape and measure the length on the curve and this is where it stops 9.1 so i'm then going to just slant it from here and bring it to come and join its parent line so i'm just going to do it like this and then bring it all like this so this is your your shape all this one is getting cut out this one is getting cut out and this one is also getting cut out now let's cut out the pattern and let's see what we have let me cut this one also so here is it this is what your something is supposed to look like you see it it's you know it goes up and then comes back down like this this is what it's supposed to look like so now that we have this what i'm going to do now is that i'm going to first of all close a few darts okay i'm going to close this dart and leave this one wide open so let's do that i'm just going to close this one it won't have that much effect because it's a very tiny dart and i'm going to just close it so we have closed this one now and then we have the rest of this now for my for my uh for my the top i'm making i want only one side to have the slash and spread i don't want the other side to have the slash and spread because the other side that has the slash and spread will not show it's only one side that will actually show the other side will not show so what's the point since this one is going to cover the other side so since it's going to cover i'm going to pause i'm going to take my fabric and cut out one of them i'm going to cut out one of them so my fabric stretches one way it doesn't stretch this way it only stretches this way so I'm going to cut my fabric in the direction that it stretches so that it can stretch across the bust of my client. So I'm going to put it like this. I'm going to put it like this. Okay. And I'm going to set it like this. I'm going to put my weight on it. Remember, my, my paper was not long enough, so I have to make sure that I had extra to the bottom besides sewing allowance so let's make see my sewing allowance is 0.5 i have to add extra one in all around it the bottom so if you see me adding that i just want you to know why i'm adding it it's not it's not normal if you actually did the correct pattern you just need to add 0.5 around the bottom not more than that so i just want you to know since you see me add extra so to the sides i will just add extra one inch to the sides extra one inch Maybe I shouldn't use the size. Okay. one inch to the side and one inch to the side and then 0 0.5 inches everywhere else. So everywhere else you add extra 0 0.5 inches for sewing allowance. Okay, so after doing all of that, the next thing now is to draw your that do you see the dart so i already added the extra space of the dart right here you see this is the regular dart. you see this extra dart was from closing this dart here that's why we have this extra dart right here because we closed this one so the 0 0.5 moved from here and moved to this place and that is why we have this extra space of that here so how am i going to transfer that to the dress so i'm going to just fold my that's this my regular dart fold it like this and then i'm going to take my ruler and draw my darts on the fabric following the already stated 
guideline right here and i'm going to do it for the other side follow the guideline right here you can do this for regular that if you want to transfer the dust from your um pattern to your fabric so i know that this is where my dart is going to be when it's time for me to take it with my on my sewing machine i'll just know that this is what i'm going to take out as my dart right very simple as it is now it's time for me to cut i have the dart on the fabric so if i want to sew it i'll just take it like this put my dart together and then just sew a nice line following my chalk mark that makes it even so much easier so much easier to make yourself a perfect dart because your chalk line is already there you just sew directly on the chalk line and your dart is going to be perfect for the front part that does not have slash and spread because the other part that has slash and spread is going to cover this part so i don't see the point of making this side also slash and spread so now let us take our pattern back and now slash and spread the upper pants now the thing with slash and spread is this you have to slash in the direction that you want the pleats to be now if you want the now what i want is that for all of my pleats to all of them to gather here i want all the pleats to gather here i want everything to gather here i want to pleat everything on top of each other right here now if i don't want that if i want all my pleats to be pleated here here and here then i have to make sure that my slash goes in this direction that i want if i want my pleats to go in the opposite direction and i want all my pleats to be up here that means i have to also slash it in the direction that i want so the thing about slash and spread even though it looks complicated and it looks you know crazy by the time you see the end, end product it is not as difficult as it seems so now let us take the direction that i want my slash and spread to go so i want it to come from around the shoulder and come here that's one I want it, another one to come from like around the ham hole and come here. I want another one to come from the ham hole area and come here. And then it, an important one that I want, I want it to disturb my dart here. I want this one to disturb my dart here so that I can close these darts. If I don't disturb my dart here, I will not be able to close my dart here. So I want one that will disturb my dart like this and come all the way here now let me show you what i mean now if i cut this one one if i slash this right here before i slash it see if i try to close my dart it's going to give me my bread shape and you know i cannot this is i know this is the bread shape that we are looking for this is what we want but you know that it's not flat enough for me to put this on a fabric it's going to be distorted so because of that i have to open this one right here once i open this one right here i can just close my dart voila and everything is flat so let me just close my dart right here and then i know my my split shouldn't have turned it into two but it is fine it's still going to work so let me just close my lower dart so now once i close this that it is easy and it's going to be possible or reasonable for me to add a flat pattern on my fabric to draw out so all my slash and spreads look at them they are ready for me normally i supposed to put a paper under it and then draw it out again but I, I i ain't got time for that i don't have time for that i'm sorry so i'm just going to draw it put it directly on my fabric now you don't have to be like me please don't be like me you can put it under a paper first and fill in the gaps first and then use the fielding gap on your fabric but i feel like this this way also works so I'm gonna take this, put it down, put it down, put it down like this. Now, before I start, I have to make sure that the uh, the the pattern that I drew that they are aligned. Okay, remember that I drew this one first, and I have to make sure that whatever it is that I draw here, they are aligned. Now, if I did it like this, I'm going to have the same side for both of them, and that is so wrong because this one. Look, I have this pattern right so this side that i'm going to cut is supposed to be facing the opposite side like this it's supposed to be covering it up like this do you understand what i'm saying it's supposed to cover it up like this so i have to make sure that i set my paper well so that the 
so that I will not have the same right side. I will not have two right sides. I have to make sure that I have one right side and one left side. And that's what you have to make sure you do before you cut out your pattern because they are not perfectly symmetrical. They are asymmetrical. One side is different from the other side. So you have to make sure that you are cutting the right side after cutting this side. If, it's exact, if it was going to be exactly the same thing, then I don't have to care. I know that I'm going to fold them together and just cut the same thing. But I'm not cutting the same thing. I'm cutting different things. So uh, that's why I have to make sure that I'm cutting the correct thing now. So this is the right place for my whatever uh, thing to face. So now I have this, I'm going to set all my uh, patterns in the next one. So I advise you to use about 1, 1 1.5, 1.25 inches um, difference as you work, or it depends on what you want at the end of the day. And then I'm gonna pin this last one. As you can see, the distance between this one and this one is very wide. So it's not it's more, way more than 1.5. Will I not keep myself because of that? No, because at the end of the day, I'm still going to pleat it in whatever way that I want at the end of the day. Like as long as the pleating ends up on one side, I think we are going to be fine. I think we're going to be fine. But I know I understand the reason why they want it to be equally spaced. It's just so that you have like a sense of organization of what you are doing while you are slashing and spreading it. So let me just widen this one a little so now i have my slash spread way that i did i just know that i am going to probably pleat it one two three four i'm going to pleat it four times right this is one two three four i'm going to pleat it into four into different even the english is running away from me but i'm going to pleat it four times to get what exactly i want okay so I'm then going to add my seam allowance round about it. I'm adding seam allowance, 0 0.5 inches seam allowance round about it. But remember the last time I also said that there was a mistake with what I did and I have to add 1.5 to all the sides, to the bottom and whatever. To the side, you add one inch, but in, I really wouldn't encourage you to add less than 0 0.5 on the side, especially if you are a beginner, so you don't make any mistake. At least it gives room for you to make mistakes so that if you want to then have more allowance you can always have more allowance so i always encourage you to put at least one inch seam allowance on the side so now i'm going to add my seam allowance round about it and then i'm going to cut it out one inch on the side and 0.5 everywhere helps don't forget that do not i keep forgetting i don't know how to draw straight lines look at me i'm trying to jump from one kind of act or booze Trying to make a straight line without a ruler. I don't know what I'll think of it. Normally, I feel like you might have seen it in some uh, patterns that they do something like this, you know, like this. This sharp corners is just so you know where your pleats are. So if you want to follow exactly this place that you have made, these sharp corners are a good idea. So you know that that is where your pleat is. When you cut it out, you know that, okay, this sharp corner is a one pleat another sharp corner is another pleat another sharp corner is another pleat another sharp corner is another pleat but since mine are not equally spaced and i might want to change the spacing or whatever i won't really put my sharp corners like that i'll just know that i'll make sure that i squeeze everything and um, with the right diameters by the time i'm done but for beginners let me let me let me say this out for beginners try to make sure that the spacing is equal on each one so you will have an organized pattern I can afford to do this because me i am sunday daboruru i don't like to like you know i like to work things out as i go so that the inspiration will enter me and stuff like that but sometimes it goes it goes very badly so so that it doesn't go badly in any way try to make sure that each space is equal to the next space right next to it so now that i have done all of this i'm going to then cut out my pattern said you can use this uh this sharp corners or the the v is like a rectangle right this rectangle that i drew to make your pleats use the next rectangle to make your next pleats use the next rectangle to make your next pleats this rectangle to make your next pleats and use this rectangle to make your last pleat and then you have something like this okay because remember i told you that everything i want to do we wanted to make sure that it's at one point everything is going to this point right here now i'm going to sew this one and then i'm going to put both of them on mannequin now so you can see what it looks like on a mannequin you know you can see the boobs and everything and see the shape of our pleated nice looking you know what we have 
Um, before we go to the mannequin, I wanted to quickly show you. I wanted to quickly show you the other side with the. Okay, so you see how easy it was to just sew the dots. Look at it. Because I already have the lines there, it was just easy to just sew my dots. And then look at it on the other side. No pointiness, no funny business. It is great. So you see, that's a very easy way to sew a nice perfect dot because your pen or your kini is straight from the pattern to the fabric. Now, let's now go to the mannequin. Okay, so my um, mannequin is not the same size as my client, unfortunately, but it's still going to work. We're still going to make it work. It has more chest than my client, but we're still going to make it work. So you see this dart right here. This is the dart of the regular pattern that we created. This is the regular pattern that we created. Even though it's not the size, it still looks very fitting on this mannequin, even though they're never on the same size, but it's still nice. So this is the dart here. Now this is the other side that we're going to pleat on this one to create our fold from the slash and spread that we did. Now what I'm going to do is this. This is the tip of, the, of this one. I'm going to take the tip and place it on the dart of the main one just to give it a nice organized look. This is a nice organized look right here. Taking this one and putting it here okay so that it looks like you know it is taught how to do you know it makes sense okay so we have one we've placed this one here let me pin that uh, so i can pin that one on my dot right here okay so now we have all this excess right here is this excess that we have to pleat to balance everything out even just one pleat self can get rid of all the excess like this right but we don't want one pleat we want the pleat to be one four pleats because that's what we slashed we slashed four pleats so because we slashed four pleats we're going to create four pleats with this excess that we did now if you notice that each of our pleats as we take each of our pleats it goes in the direction of the slash that we need now this first pleat will go in the direction of the shoulder because remember we took the slash from here and took it to the shoulder so this first pleat goes in the direction of the shoulder so i'm going to take my first pleat here now if i take my second pleat the second pleat goes in the direction of the upper side of the arm o. look at it it goes like this here that's the second pleat. The third pleat will go in the direction of the inside of the ham hole. Look at it, it goes like this. And then the last pleat will go in the direction of like the three quarter side of the ham hole or three quarter part of the ham hole, which it goes like this. Do you see that? So all our pleats, all our pleats go in the direction of the slash that we made at the beginning of our sewing escapades. Oh, I have pins here. Our sewing escapades. So you see that slashing in the right direction matters from the very beginning to the final outcome of what you are going for, okay? So this is what we have. The first slash goes here, the second goes here, the third goes here, the fourth goes here. And this is, ladies and gentlemen, our nice uh, crisscross or overlapping top with one side pleated. Now, if you like this tutorial, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching it so far. I appreciate your concentration. I appreciate the time, your time that you have given to me today. I do not take it for granted. Please make sure that you subscribe. Make sure that you share. Make sure you comment in the comment section. If you have any questions or if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much for your time. Till next time. Till next week. See you guys. Bye.